It's been a while, but we're back doing some DIY in the fish cave. If you guys are new to the channel, um, everything in here was DIY, simple, pretty much built uh, by these two hands. Not that that's a big accomplishment because it's, it's cinder blocks and two by four. Uh, we got an automatic drip system and there's a, you know, air pump automatically doing all the tanks in the room. So this video will be part of a playlist with all those. Uh, but today, as you can see, we got all this insulation and we're going to be taking care of insulating the garage door. It's very simple or else you wouldn't be watching this video because I only do simple DIY projects because that's, that's all I can handle at this point. Um, it's really cheap. Each of these boards was 15 bucks, but let's get into the process and I'll talk to you guys as we do it. Quick tip before we get started, all you're gonna need besides your insulation foam board and obviously something to insulate is a, uh, a marker, um, a measuring tape and a sharp razor blade. Then also you want to make sure that you're wearing your safety goggles. Today I just have my super duper safety glasses on. Uh, in reality, I was just really lazy, didn't put my contacts in. And you know, I don't even usually wear these because as you can see, they're broken. You should be able to find this foam in any Home Depot, Lowe's or hardware store. Um, it comes in different sizes. Um, this is not a full sheet. The full sheet is usually eight feet long uh, by four feet wide. And the price is going to be about 10 to 20 bucks a sheet. Uh, based on the thickness, these are a half inch thickness or just over a three R value. And I'm going to cut them down to size and fit them into the panes of the garage. And essentially how it works is it, it, um, it creates a barrier between the garage or between the door. It's like you insulate your house. And you want to find one if possible that has this silver backing. It's not necessarily um, you know, a must. If you do have this silver backing, this reflective backing, you want that to be facing kind of towards the insulated space. So in my case, it's going to be facing into the garage. And this is going to help me um, both in the winter time to keep the, you know, maintain the temperatures as well as in the summertime um, to keep the temperatures down. So it's just going to help keep the overall temperature steady in here, which is exactly what I'm looking for in a fish room. The first thing you want to do is grab your measuring tape and measure the pane or the first area that you're going to be wanting to um, make the first cuts for. In this case, uh, on one of the panes in the garage door, it's going to be 50 inches long and it's gonna be 21 inches uh, high. Now, I know that I wanna trim it a little um, shorter than that because I wanna be able to make it fit. Um, this is not gonna be the tightest uh, fit ever. If you guys are looking for like the most perfect, secure, insulated uh, garage door, this is not gonna be it. These are gonna be able to be really quick, really simple, and do a good job maintaining the temperature. I'm not gonna be able to guarantee, um, you know, how many degrees it's gonna be able to change it until next year. I'll definitely do an update video and uh, just let you guys know, um, you know, how it's worked for me. Now I know it's 21 inches, so I'm gonna measure just short of it. And I know there's probably better ways to measure out there. I usually just go along, make a few marks at, you know, just below 20 inches or just below 21 inches now, about, you know, 20 and you know, three quarters we'll go with. But keep in mind, these measurements aren't gonna be exact. This is gonna be mostly hidden and to be honest, um, I should be measuring on uh, measuring and then marking this up on the other side. You know, it's going to be hidden. But like I said, we're in a garage. You're probably not going to see this line anyway. I was never good at art class, so I don't draw the sh straightest lines to begin with, even with a measuring tape. And to be honest, I don't really care. No one's going to see this. And I'm not looking for a perfect seal anyway. Now, you want to make sure your knife is very sharp. I bought a brand new one, and it really pretty much cuts through this like butter. And I just kind of follow the line through here. And with one cut, you know, it's kind of a half score slash pretty much a full cut because you're going to be able to get through pretty much, at least with this half inch thick foam, you're going to be able to get through most of it. And except for the other barrier on the other side, which will be your second swipe just to kind of clean things up. You bring it to the closer, closer edge of it's in frame. And then just make sure it's over and kind of just give it a light squeeze down and it should fold. And then what I usually just do is take the knife again and then just run right in that crease very lightly and it's going to separate very easily. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for the uh, lengthwise cut. Remember we need it just at about uh, 50, just under. So we'll go ahead and, and do that right now. Back to the knife for a nice clean cut. I'll do this one even right-handed just to show you guys how easy it is and how much I don't really care how much I follow the line. 
Wow, maybe I'm a righty. Holy crap, that's the best cut I've done so far. Uh, and then just, you know, repeat the process. Really simple, guys. I'm not sure what, what's in frame or not, so I want to make sure I get you guys in frame. And then just kind of follow along. And if all goes well, should drop to the floor. Like clockwork. And now, we're ready to put this piece into the frame. Depending on the exact type of foam you get and how flexible it is, as well as kind of how your garage door is set up, mine's kind of got these pretty big lips on both sides, as well as um, the, uh, the side there. So what I found is you may not be able to get it and fit it in there, okay? Now, another thing is each window, they look very similar, but they're off. They're not exactly the same. So you want to make sure you measure each, you know, pane or each frame um, specifically. Now, as you can see, I kind of did the first one, and it's split into two. So that's what I'm going to do with this one as well, and it's something that I found that's going to work. Now, like I said, once again, I'm not worried about it being an exact tight fit. I may come back and maybe hit this with some tape. Um, if you guys have ideas or you know how to, you know, really make it so it's, you know, air tight, I don't think that's like, necessary. Um, but if you, uh, if you think it is, let me know in the comments down below. But I'm just going to simply cut this one kind of, not exactly in half. I kind of did it in, uh, you know, two thirds, one third. And then the pieces should be able, easily be able to fit in there. But let's go ahead and give that a try. So we're back with our two puzzle pieces now. And they should pop in fairly easily, but still need a little bit of a squeeze. This one will go in here, and then this one going to pop in over top, and slide over, and there it is. They kind of fit together, and now they're snug. So like I said, it's pretty simple. It's not perfect, and then I'm going to rinse and repeat for all the different panes. Got a few scrap pieces left, but the whole garage is now insulated. I'm also going to uh, use some of this foam seal around the edges just to kind of prevent some more drafts. I'll uh, show you guys that in a second. But first, look at the garage door. I apologize I didn't get more uh, time-lapse footage of me pushing these in. Um, I feel like we're in a, like a refrigerator or something, like uh, one of those big box freezers if you guys have worked at a grocery store. Tangent, anyway. Um, it was really easy, guys. And um, as you can see here, it wasn't the greatest job kind of pushing them in. I kind of to, I sliced them and then squeezed them in like puzzle pieces, like I said. Um, I'm not sure if this is the most ideal way to do it. I'm not claiming that. I'm showing you guys how I did it, and I will follow up. Uh, I'm not looking for optimal min-max results. I'm just looking for a decent improvement, and I think this is going to be a lot, lot better than nothing because I was having some fairly uh, good swings in here as far as temperatures. I was sticking just, you know, a few heaters here and there and tanks that had some fish that really needed it. Luckily, I got a lot of shrimp and stuff that, you know, when these tanks dip down to the low, low 70s, I wasn't that worried about the shrimp. But I do have some species that are a little more picky and not as hardy. So I definitely want to make sure that I set myself up for success. And this will help, like I said, not only in the wintertime, but the summertime as well, because, you know, temperatures in here could get, you know, over 100 degrees. I plan on also... Um, insulating the windows there's two windows in here and then also above if you guys don't know um, like I said I'm not a scientist I don't know everything about heating and insulating um, but a lot of the heat rises a lot of air rises so you want to make sure you insulate the attic and there is no insulation above a lot a large portion of this attic so it's another thing to look into um, I'm more worried about that for next winter time but I may do a DIY video um, on just putting some insulation up in the attic just to kind of take it one step further. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get some of these seals put on, and I'll show you guys how easy that is. You can see it's actually window seal, but it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. I got it because it's the, it's the correct you know, uh, width that I need. Um, if you look over here, simply what I'm gonna do is, anywhere where I'm gonna see like a lot of light coming through, I know that you know it's gonna be draft coming through as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and line um, this foam it's partic uh, particularly on either side of the garage door, right where I see this, this um, the light coming through. And it's a double-sided tape, so essentially you're just gonna peel back the tape and just lay it and cut it. So it's really simple, and it should give me just an extra layer of protection for uh, insulation.
as you can see, it's not perfect. There's still some cracks, but a lot less light is getting through and it's done on both sides. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Best of luck insulating your garage, your fish room. As always, guys, stay positive and stay passionate.